we want to determine the exact value of sine pi over 12 radians using a half angle identity. If you watched the previous video, we just found this sine function value using this half angle identity. But we can also find the exact sine function value using this identity here, which is often referred to as a power reducing formula, though some textbooks do refer to this as a half angle identity. These two identities are equivalent, just in a different form. So in this example, we'll be using this identity here to find the exact value of sine pi over 12 radians. Now if we wanted to, we could convert pi over 12 radians to degrees, which I've shown here below. Notice pi over 12 radians is equal to 15 degrees. But it's good to get used to radians, so let's leave it in this form. So if we want to apply the identity sine squared a equals one half times the quantity one minus cosine two a, I'm going to change the form of this and it as a fraction. So the numerator would be one minus cosine two a, and the denominator would be two. So notice how here, this means a would have to be equal to pi over 12, but when we apply this, we're going to have sine squared pi over 12 equals, on the right we'd have one minus cosine of two times a, or two over one times pi over 12 divided by two. Looking at this product here, we have a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and six twos and 12. So now we know that sine squared pi over 12 is equal to the quantity one minus cosine pi over six divided by two. Pi over six would be equivalent to 30 degrees. So now to find the value of cosine pi over six, we can use a reference triangle or the unit circle. Let's go ahead and sketch pi over six radians in standard position. The initial side would be along the positive x-axis. Terminal side would be approximately here. Again, where the angle, in this case also the reference angle, is pi over six radians, or 30 degrees. So we should recognize our reference triangle as a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. We're in the first quadrant where everything is positive. So we can label the opposite side one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg, square root three. So cosine pi over six radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is square root three divided by two. Or on the unit circle, here's the terminal side of pi over six radians, where x equals cosine theta, so cosine pi over six again equals square root three divided by two. So now we have sine squared of pi divided by 12 is equal to one minus square root three divided by two all over two. And again, we're looking for sine pi over 12, not sine squared pi over 12. But before we take the square to both sides, let's simplify the right side. Let's clear the denominator of two from the numerator. And we can do this by multiplying the numerator by two. But if we multiply the numerator by two, we must do the same to the denominator. So we're going to multiply by two over two. So on the numerator, when we distribute, we would have two minus square root three divided by two times two would just be square root three. So we have minus square root three, and our denominator is four. So now we have sine squared of pi divided by 12 is equal to two minus square root three all over four. And now because we want sine, not sine squared, we'll now take the square root of both sides of the equation. When we do this, we are going to have a plus or minus here on the right. So we still have to determine whether the sine function value should be positive or negative, just like we did when using this half angle identity. And since pi over 12 radians would be in the first quadrant, remember that would be 15 degrees, not 30 degrees, but it's still in the first quadrant where all the trig function values are positive, we know this will be a positive square root. So we'd have sine pi over 12 is equal to the positive square root 
of two minus square root three all over four. And because we have a fraction under the square root, we can write this as the square root of two minus square root three all over the square root of four. Of course, the square root of four simplifies to two. So we have the square root of two minus square root three all over two as the exact sine function value of sine pi over twelve. So if we compare this sine function value to the sine function value when we applied this half angle identity, of course it should be the same. And again, if you watched the previous video, here is the sine function value that we found, which obviously is the same. I hope you found this helpful.